What are 90s kids' two favorite things? Pokemon and Jurassic Park. That's accurate. Well, what if we could basically put both of those two things together? There are over 800 Pokemon out there, and the inspiration of them has to come from somewhere. Many of them come from none other than dinosaurs and fossil records. That means that there's a slight chance that Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is actually a prequel to Pokemon. Does that mean that Chris Pratt could possibly be a Pokemon trainer in one of the next movies? I certainly hope so. Tyrantrum may not be familiar to old school Pokemon fans. The creature is part of the sixth generation of the famous pocket monsters, which means it originated in Pokemon X and Y. It's a rather large red dinosaur looking Pokemon that's both rock and dragon type. Even by Pokemon standards, this thing is pretty threatening. It's somehow even more intimidating than a Charizard. We'll start with this one because it's obviously based, at least a little bit based, on a Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's everyone's favorite dinosaur from the original Jurassic Park. It's an absolute shame that puddles don't start to shake whenever you use them. Either that or your character could shout Must go faster. as they run away. The only main difference here is that a lot of paleontologists agree that dinosaurs probably had feathers. Are T-Rexes really still all that scary when you think of them as giant chickens? As far as a Jurassic World movie, this one would be the one that tries to attack Chris Pratt at the start of it, then at the end it would attack a different dinosaur to save Pratt. Fans of the original games should recognize the rare Pokemon, Aerodactyl. This one was part of the first generation of Pokemon. It's a flying and rock style Pokemon that's also appeared in the original Pokemon Stadium. What you might not know is that it has another form. Mega Aerodactyl basically looks just like Aerodactyl but with a lot of spikes. Aerodactyl is also obviously based on a Pterodactyl. We've seen them in Jurassic Park 3 and they look a lot like Aerodactyl. You know, except just much more terrifying. Wrong on many levels. While the name of the Pokemon is based on that, it doesn't really look just like one. For starters, Pterodactyl is actually an incorrect term. Technically, the term for this particular creature is Pterodactylus. Interestingly enough though, there's another kind of prehistoric creature that is related to Aerodactyl. There's one that's literally named after the famous Pokemon. The Aerodactylus was named specifically to reference Aerodactyl. So the next time someone tells you that Pokemon aren't real, well, now you have something to argue with, don't you? Amistar should be another Pokemon that's familiar to the OG fans. The rock and water fossil Pokemon was available all the way back in the original games, though to be honest it's not one of the more memorable ones. To be fair though it's hard to compete against classics like Squirtle, Pikachu, and Charizard. The name fossil Pokemon should give you a little bit of a clue that Amistar is based on real fossils. The Pokemon is based on Ammonites. Some Pokemon look really cartoonish compared to the things that they're based on. Amistar more or less looks just like Ammonites. They're basically the exact same thing but with big eyes. Neither these Pokemon nor these prehistoric creatures have ever really been all that popular. The Jurassic series seems very uninterested in prehistoric creatures that aren't cool dinosaurs either. Lilip aren't the most well-known Pokemon out there. The rock grass fossil Pokemon doesn't look particularly striking. It basically looks like a flower, but that's not what it's based on. They don't get a whole lot of time in the Pokemon anime. I'm pretty sure that they designed a group of Pokemon that were only created to be in the background. Background Mon, as I think they should be called. Lilip are actually based on sea lilies, which are the background Mon of nature. These things are actually known as Crinoid. These little guys live in the sea, so you probably wouldn't even see them in a Jurassic World sequel. They have ancient origins, but they aren't flowers like they appear. Crinoid are animals, similar to starfish or sea cucumbers. That's basically the family of creatures where you can't really tell if they're vegetation, rocks, or an actual animal. Kabuto is another Pokemon that goes all the way back to the beginning. This cute little guy is introduced in the original games. This rock water fossil Pokemon is pretty creepy, but he's also pretty cool. 
It's amazing how many Pokemon are cute from one angle, but horrifying from another. Kabuto is a lot cooler than he gets credit for. I mean, for starters, at level 40, he evolves into Kabutops. And that Pokemon is basically Scyther's fossil-looking rival. Kabuto is actually based on Trilobites. These anthropods are from the early Cambrian period, though they didn't actually have glowing pink eyes. This is another creature pairing that doesn't really get a lot of love in either franchise. They probably should though. Kabuto might be pretty creepy, but from the right angles, they're actually really cute. I could also see some evil Trilobites that take out one of the mindless mercenaries who always ends up on these islands in these movies. We've got another entry into our list of unloved anthropods. Anorith is a rock bug fossil Pokemon. It's one of the many fossil Pokemon that can be resurrected, because obviously the Pokemon universe doesn't have Jurassic Park. It's a vaguely scorpion looking Pokemon that is super creepy aside from the googly eyes on either side of its head. There are quite a lot of Pokemon that are extremely creepy aside from that one cute feature. Then there's Jinx, which is basically the most terrifying thing that's ever happened. They are based off Animalicaris. Pictures of them are pretty terrifying, but were they actually that terrifying in real life? Evidently yes. They are said to be one of the Earth's earliest apex predators. Those ugly HP Lovecraft looking monsters used to be the baddest creatures on this planet. So naturally they would probably fit into the Jurassic series, though probably in an extremely inaccurate way. The first time you see a Tortoga, you'd be forgiven for assuming that they were modeled after sea turtles. I mean, they basically look like blue versions of Crush and Squirt from Finding Nemo, except presumably without those California Surfer Bro attitudes. The Water Rock Fossil Pokemon is actually based on an ancient creature. You can tell by the subtle shape of its shell and the pointed nose. It is clearly based on an Archelon. As you've probably guessed, this ancient creature from the Cretaceous period is thought to be a relative of the sea turtle. There's a lot that we don't know about them, but from what we do know about turtles, we can come up with some pretty decent guesses. They probably swam in packs of four, loved pizza, and answered to some sort of ancient rodent. They also likely fought lots of prehistoric ninjas. Shredosaurus was a thing, right? It's also not incredibly clever, but the name Taroga is pretty much just a riff on turtle. Tortuga is the Spanish word for turtle. If you're familiar with the Pirates of the Caribbean movies or you know your geography, you've heard of Tortuga as well. It's an island in the Caribbean that was a famous haven for pirates. Rampardos are actually some of the coolest looking of the prehistoric inspired Pokemon. They're big with giant tough skulls made for head cracking. So it's no surprise that they're based on some of the coolest dinosaurs out there. They look exactly like Pachycephalosaurus. I'm just gonna call them Pachys from now on because that word is ridiculous. Come on science, make better names, would ya? If you recognize these dinos, it's probably because you've seen them in the Jurassic Park series. There have been several that appear in the series. One of them even had a name. There's a Pachy in the Lost World Jurassic Park who is named Friar Tuck. They've also had a ton of Pachy toys. It was one of their go-to toy dinosaurs. By comparison, Rampardos isn't nearly as cool, though that name is much better. If you look at a Bastiodon, you might not immediately know what dinosaur it's based on. That's because its head basically looks like a thwomp from Super Mario. It's actually based on a dinosaur called Chasmosaurans. They look like Triceratops, but they aren't. The big difference in the design is that Triceratops have spikes all along their head, while Chasmosaurans and Bastiodons have two spikes on the tops of their heads. Clearly, they have a dinosaur rivalry that needs to be settled up on the big screen. Would it be too much for a Triceratops to fight a Chasmosaurans in the background of one of the movies? It might be for someone who actually studies dinosaurs as opposed to people who only watch them in action movies. Who cares about them though, right? Everyone knows that paleontologist Ross Geller is the worst of the friends. Bastiodon is a rock steel fossil Pokemon, and it's used by a pretty cool character in the anime named Byron who is just obsessed with fossils. So Bastiodon is a pretty perfect Pokemon for him. It's strange that this Pokemon gets so hyped up, especially considering the fact that it's not particularly designed well. 
If you've got over 800 Pokemon, why not use the cooler looking ones? Auroras are some of the most elegant Pokemon ever. They are definitely on the Dragonair side of beautiful and far away from the Jinx side of horrific. They also sort of look like they'd be creatures in the Steven Universe world. They probably sing some beautiful song about friendship. Pretty much everyone does there. This elegant Pokemon is actually based on a pretty elegant creature in its own right. The Amargosaurus is a truly beautiful dinosaur. Which isn't saying much considering how many dinosaurs look like genetic mistakes. Looking at you, Giawati. There are several moments in the Jurassic franchise which pauses to ponder about how beautiful one dinosaur or another is. These dinosaurs haven't been featured yet in the series, but they totally should be. If you're going to spend millions of dollars on one of these things, at least do so on a pretty one. Aurorus, on the other hand, are rock ice fossil Pokemon that appear in Generation 6. Strangely enough, it isn't seen very much in the Pokemon anime. Why? would you design such a beautiful Pokemon only to never show it? Of all the Pokemon dinosaur pairings to not get any attention, this one is probably the most glaring. Hashtag justice for Aurorus. Well, there you have it, the top 10 Pokemon that have prehistoric counterparts. Which one was your favorite? Let us know in the comments section down below and don't forget to like and subscribe.